For this video, I'll be working through the Level 2 2017 Mechanics Exam, Question 2. Sarah, a 55kg athlete, is competing in high jump where she needs to get her body over the crossbar successfully without hitting it. Where she lands, a padded mattress cushions her fall. Um, calculate the size of the force acting on Sarah just after takeoff in position 2 in the above diagram. Draw an arrow slash bracket arrows in the box to show the direction of the force. So, when she's on the ground, she's got gravity pulling her down, normal force pulling her up. At position two, the only force is gravity. Um, forget about air resistance, it's, it's literally close enough to zero that you can just not worry about it. Um, at position three, still not touching anything, so just gravity. Position four, the mattress plus gravity means she's not moving. So, literally, FG, we can calculate the size of it, is equal to MG is equal to what's her mass 55.0 times 9.8 which is equal to 539 newtons and because this is given to us in the formula sheet as two significant two significant figures that means our answer has to be 2sf which is 540 newtons right and as for the arrow i don't know this is just Draw gravity downwards, F, G, look at that. Okay, during during one of the jumps, the initial velocity of zero at takeoff is 8 metres per second at an angle of 80, uh, 70 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the time it takes for zero to reach the maximum height. So this is like a bit of a double whammy. First, let's try and finish off this triangle. Here's the right angle there, right? So this is this label a hypotenuse. This is the adjacent, and that is the opposite because it is opposite opposite the angle. We have we're trying to find what are we trying to find? The vertical velocity, because that'll tell us that's the velocity in the x and y, uh, the y direction. That's the direction in which gravity acts. So that's basically if you're going up, gravity is pulling you down. So you need to find out your vertical velocity to use your acceleration to slow you down and then you figure out when you stop. So let's just do that now. So I'm going to have an O and an H. So I've got sine theta is equal to O over H. I know what H is, it's 8 meters per second. So I'm going to move the H to the side. So I'm going to go 8 sine, my theta is 70, equals the opposite, which is a vertical velocity, which is 7.517 meters per second. Notice I don't round here, I only round at the end. This is the vertical to call velocity. There we go. So now this is that's the initial. So we've got V I is equal to this. 7.517 meters per second minus one. Uh, the final velocity at the top of the flight is obviously zero because it stops at the top and then turns around. And the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second minus one because balls go or who was it? Sarah's going up. Acceleration is going down, so it's pointing in the other direction, so it needs to be minus. Then we go to our formula sheet, and what are we trying to find? The time it takes, we're trying to find time equals question mark. So we go to our formula sheet, and we look for something with VF, VI, everything except for a D, basically. So, has a D, has a D, has a D, doesn't have a D, let's use that one there. So we have VI, VF equals VI plus a T. In other words, VF minus VI, because we move the VI over there, divided by A equals T. And by the time you substitute that in, that's going to be minus 7.5 divided by minus 9.8, which is going to give me, what is the answer? 0.77 seconds. That has to be 2SF, because pretty much everything in level 2 is 2SF. Right. After Sarah has jumped, she lies motionless in position 4. That's that position there. As shown in the diagram on the previous page, there are 20 springs evenly spaced in the area of the mattress where she lands. The average compression of each spring is 4.5 centimetres. So let's just highlight this. That'll throw off some calculations if this is not in metres. So let's just chuck it there. And her mass is 55 kgs. It said that over there. Calculate the elastic potential energy stored in a single spring in the mattress. So if we go back to our trust trusty formula sheet, that's the energy stored in a spring. So we have um, EP 
equals half um, kx squared. And what else? We got so there are 20 springs, which means one spring, 55 over 20, equals 2.75 kg per spring. So one spring supports 2.75 kgs. If you didn't pick up on that, you'll have a bad time. All right, what else do we need to know? We know the, dis the displacement, that's x, which is 4.5 centimetres. Um, we need to figure out what k is. So k, um, on your formula sheet you've got Hooke's law, which is k is f equals negative kx. Um, f is also equal to, um, when she's sitting on the mattress, you have two forces. You have fg, and you have, I suppose, the support force, which in this case is a spring holding her up. So we can say that this is equal to mg because gravity is pulling her down and the spring is pushing her up and they're balanced. So in other words, k, let's just put an error, oh that's a terrible error, is equal to um, mg divided by x, which is, what is that? 2.75, because it was one spring, times 9.8, because we're looking for a single the energy in a single spring of the mattress. You can work out the total energy of the mattress, but we're just looking for a single spring, divided by 0.045, which is 4.5 centimetres. K is equal to 598.88, we won't run that yet, and that's Newton, uh, Newton's per metre, because it's force divided by uh, divided by distance, which is meters, yep. Now, it is simply plug and chug. EP equals half times 588, 598, 8.88 times bracket 0.045 bracket squared equals, what gives it that? 0 0.60, no, it's 0 0.61, because you've got to round it up, joules, so 2SF. Right, next one. When Sarah lands um, on the mattress after the jump, the force on her body is quite large. Discuss two changes that could be made to the springs to the mattress to make Sarah's landing more comfortable. So I'll just write sort of the first answer and then I'll just sort of discuss it.
Right, so what I've said is decrease the spring constant. This will cause the serial to take longer to stop as the springs will now compress more. Um, as the change of momentum will still be the same, the force on serial will decrease as, if this is constant, you're increasing the time, it'll decrease the force. Um, another thing I said is add more springs to move at uh, to more evenly distribute the force. It's sort of like the bed of nails um, example. If you add more nails, it doesn't hurt as much. Um, you can make the springs out of different material, although this whole question, this question here is a bit ambiguous, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. The only real answer is just decrease the spring constant.